Hello everyone, I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie and this is indisputable. I wanna introduce our co-host today, the honorable, I'll call him, Mayor Mondale Robinson, Enfield, North Carolina, and the founder of the Black Male Voter Project. So Mayor, it's an honor to have you on with us today. It's good to be back, thank you so much for having me. All right, well, you've got the B team, that's me. Dr. Ritchie has earned the day off. Mayor, we do wanna begin with Brittany Griner. We've got an update on really horrific conditions she is enduring right now in a penal colony in Russia. Here's what we've learned, as I said, horrifying conditions now. The basketball star in that Russian prison, it includes her treatment homophobia, racism, and 16 hour work days. It is just incredible to think about where she is and how long she's been there. According to the nation's Dave Zirin, prisoners in Mordovia, where Griner was taken earlier this month, are barely treated like human beings. He also explained to TMZ, bigotry is commonplace, medical care nearly non-existent. Inmates expected to sew the uniforms for police and guards. In fact, it's unclear if Brittany Griner, you know, she's six foot eight, will even have a bed that will fit her frame. It is just incredible to think about what she is going through right now. After being detained in 2012, a musician, according to Zeron, she described the country as hell, where beatings and torture are frequent. So how is she doing? Here's what her camp is saying. Um, they've insisted the WNBA stars trying to remain brave in the face of it all, saying in a statement following her move to Mordovia earlier this month that Brittany is doing as well as could be expected, despite the fact she is alone and now nearing her ninth month in detention, separated from her loved ones. Her reps go on to say she is trying to stay strong. Greiner has been detained in Russia since February after she was accused of bringing hashish oil in her luggage to Moscow. In August, she was sentenced to nine years in prison and appeal of that sentence was denied last month. Yesterday, White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby noted negotiations with Russia to free and imprison Americans Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan are still underway. And the administration is going to stay committed, he says, to that effort. Mayor, it's extraordinary to think about how long Brittany Griner has been We'll call it captivity. Um, these were trumped up charges, many believe, and she's being held illegally. But that's not going to stop the Putin regime, um, as I'll call him. What say you about how we keep the faith and what efforts should be done to bring her home? Yeah, I think it's important that we start this show off with uh, talking about Britney as often as possible, not just this show. Um, mm-hmm. We need to go all the time on networks that are progressive, like TYT, because. We see mainstream media and we know they're so comfortable forgetting about black lives at home. So imagine what happens when you're off in a foreign land as a political prisoner like Brittany is. So I think it's important that we do that and we name that first. Also, it is it is absolutely horrendous. I remember seeing a picture early on when she was locked up of her body hanging off of the bed they had her in. It was so small. So we we already know that the conditions are gonna be insufferable for, for Brittany. I, I do applaud the uh, the White House and, and the administration for continuing to try to fight. We did hear from Rude uh, that uh, that we actually have a real serious a proposal, another proposal with alternatives to bring Brittany home. This was said yesterday or so, I think. And um, we're just waiting for the, the Federation, the Russian Federation to take this uh, serious. But I think Putin understand where he is in the world right now. His standing is low at lower than it has been in the past because of his attack and his war on Ukraine. And he's using Brittany's life away from her family in captivity as a political prison to be uh, as a, a negotiating chip, as a pawn on a chessboard, unfortunate. And I think we as as, as people of color, black people, progressive and, and people who love humans must yeah. continue to sound the alarm about this. Yeah, I, I often think though as a person of color and, and knowing what Putin knows about treatment of black people in America, of minorities in America, if he values her enough, and if he believes America values her enough to feel like he needs to do anything right here. 
Yeah, I, 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 you know, we, we, you and I both know we're too smart to bet, bet on anything about Putin doing something right. Uh, Putin will do what he think is advantageous for himself and his continued power in Russia and the Federation. But what we do know though is uh, he, he's running out of options as it pertains to being taken serious on the world stage as he continues to commit uh, human right violations in Ukraine. And I think that we'll come to a point where he has to uh, turn over Brittany. And this, at least when you asked, how do we keep the faith? This is where I'm keeping my faith that he's running out of options to be taken. Yeah. So Brittany may be an option that, that will get her, that may be a way for her to get home. Yeah, um, administration, that's one thing. But do you think the players, you know, we heard LeBron, others speaking out uh, quite a bit when she was first um, arrested, uh, kept in. Side a jail awaiting trial. Uh, really, only the former basketball star Don Staley, um, who's superstar coach now too. I see every day she's putting it out there on her social media. But that's one person. I'm sure I'm missing others. Are players doing enough? Um, other star athletes, other notable celebrities doing enough? Or nine months later, have many you know kind of put her in the back of their minds? Yeah, and I think that's the problem with our 24 hour news cycle. When we spend so much time entertaining and educating, this is why TYT is so important because we spend so much time on this channel telling people what's important and Brittany Griner's life should not be put on the back burner. I think, you know, athletes were athletes, you know what I'm saying? And uh, while that's not funny, it is absolutely true. We, I mean, we're thinking about if you consider the, the NBA, uh, a couple of years ago, nearly 70 plus percent of them weren't even registered to vote. So uh, expecting them to continue, keep a sustained movement around Brittany Griner, maybe Griner might be a bit too much to ask. But what I will say, it is people like uh, like yourself, Sister Reed, myself, and others to make sure that we don't forget this sister and let folk know that she is extremely vulnerable, um, not just because of her six foot eight stature, not just because she's a black woman, but because she's a black woman, but also because she's homophobic, and also because Putin, I mean, because she's uh, LGBTQI, but also because Putin is a terrorist and he will do anything to use her as a chip. Yeah, it really is something that's gotta be kept on the front page, as we say in this industry. Um, but we're gonna move on now, Mayor, to Stanford University. Katie Meyer, student athlete who took her own life. There's an update on her story today. So much sexual assault and other issues on College campuses that has been swept under the rug. In this case, we'll remind you, Katie Meyer, the star soccer captain, committed suicide after learning she might be disciplined for taking action against a football player who she believed had sexually assaulted a teammate who was underage as well. Here's what we know Meyer's death came almost immediately after she received notice that she faced disciplinary action for an incident in which she spilled coffee on a football player who allegedly raped her teammate. According to an email Meyer received on the evening of her death, the potentially, this potentially rather put her diploma on hold and also put her positions as a student and an athlete at the school in jeopardy. So she'd worked her whole life and here she was. In November 2021, according to the complaint, Meyer expressed despair to Stanford employees when she stated she'd been scared for months that my clumsiness will ruin my chances of leaving Stanford on a good note. And was experiencing anxiety she was during the disciplinary process. So the family is suing. And here's what else we know about that lawsuit. Meyer's family's legal team arguing that her death is a tragic reflection of broader issues with the school's egregious and reckless mishandling of its disciplinary process. They said in a statement to Sports Illustrated, the statement quoted an appraisal by a community committee at the school, which called the school's disciplinary process overly punitive and harmful to its students. The complaint in part reads, Stanford's after hours disciplinary charge and the reckless nature and manner of submission to Katie caused Katie to suffer an acute stress reaction that impulsively led to her suicide. Katie's suicide was completed Without planning and solely in response to the shocking and deeply distressing information she received from Stanford while alone in her room without any support or resources. Through this litigation, the statement goes on. We will not only obtain justice for Katie, but also ensure necessary changes put into place to help protect Stanford students and provide safeguards when students are in need of support. 
And the university's history of sexual assault cases, Meyer's unfair treatment is just the most recent example. Janelle Miller, assaulted by former Stanford swimmer Brock Turner, has said the university failed to offer her sufficient resources and support following the assault. Around the same time that Turner was found guilty of sexual assault, the school faced a separate lawsuit for allowing a student known to have sexually assaulted four other students to graduate. Stanford's response to criticisms of how it handles campus sexual assaults has largely been to restrict alcohol and discourage students from walking on dark unlit pathways on campus at night. School's punishment of Meyer, which her family says led to her death, shows how little has changed over the years. Stanford has denied responsibility for her death and had this to say. The Stanford community continues to grieve Katie's tragic death. We sympathize with her family for the unimaginable pain that Katie's passing has caused them. However, we strongly disagree with any assertion that the university is responsible. That from the Stanford University spokesperson. This almost makes me nauseous, Mayor. It almost makes me nauseous because here we have a university who doesn't really want to take any responsibility for their actions. They don't really want to change anything. Don't walk on dark unlit paths. How about if you rape somebody, you're going to be held accountable, Mayor? Yeah, I think to the irony of having your name be Stanford and you're not standing for victims is absolutely disgusting in this moment and every other one. When someone said earlier when you were reading, someone said that the school was over punitive to who? Not not to these male athletes who can that part women. They're over punitive to someone who spilled coffee on a rapist or alleged rapist of an underage athlete. I think this is absolutely disgusting and, and for the school to say that they have no responsibility in this. It's, it's, it's idea uh, if you think about where people fall at in this country, how racism and oppression and misogyny works. You have these large institutions telling this person that you may not get your degree. You may be disciplined and it may follow you for the rest of your life. You may not be considered an athlete because you spill coffee on someone who raped your teammate, your underage teammate. But this person will graduate without any problems. This is absolutely disgusting and it is so American. And, and, and it's that where we see athletes time after time, not just in college settings, but in the professional setting as well, get away with anything relating to the trauma or inserting sexual assault against women. And it's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. I couldn't say it any better than you. I want to seize upon a word you use, Mayor. You called it American. I, I concur. I agree with that. This, this is American. I don't know if it's just athletes. Sure, Brock Turner, star swimmer, and you have the football player. And sure, they're getting special treatment in general, all campuses across, especially D1 schools, um, prestigious programs. But I think men in general on these college campuses, students, get preferential treatment and the victim reportedly of these sexual assaults is always made an example of if you will what is it about the culture on these campuses yeah I, I, like i said i think i think when we consider the history of american universities this is a spaces that were created for slave owners children that couldn't get into the ivy league schools in in europe so i mean we, we're talking about a hundred years or so removed a few generations removed where we was creating spaces for uh white privileged men and um college campuses seem to continue to space to be privileged for men um, and, 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 and at the detriment to, to women. And I think this is a disgusting space that we need to address. And if we could call in professional athletes for steroid use, definitely somebody, the border regions of Stanford should be in front of Congress talking about how this continue to happen on their campus. Well, I was gonna ask you that because people like us love to, and I think we should continue to pontificate and talk about this and put it out there. But what should happen? Because you know, every time we do one of these stories, what, what I usually get is a reaction from one or two people out there who says, yeah, but, but guys are, are wrongly accused. You know that happens and, and it's not fair. What should happen when a young woman brings a complaint or, or a witness brings a complaint and says, this happened to me? Yeah, I think I think we should we absolutely should have a justice department that says people are innocent and proven guilty. But this is not a space where we should demean victims or people who report sexual assault. I think this 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 situation will deter so many other women on Stanford 
friends for standing up for their friends that have been sexually assaulted, or even people who have been sexually assaulted from, from our reporting. So I think we should create a space where it's comfortable for victims to report what has happened to them. Yeah, we know some people may exaggerate what happened, but we also know there are so many women that never speak of the crimes against them. It's crime that I, I, I operate under the space that I believe maybe every woman I know has been sexually assaulted by some mm-hmm. man country. And I think until we are in space where they are comfortable and safe to talk about that, we're not in a space to talk about those that may have exaggerated a story without going through the process. Yeah, absolutely. Because I believe that Katie Meyer was made an example of. I believe she was made an example of. When you say, Mayor, that there's other people on this college campus who will get the message and won't be as forthcoming. And she was made an example of, this was heavy handed, something about spilled coffee. I don't know if she threw it in his face or if she just, like it said, spilled the coffee. But it does seem to take away her whole future and any chance of perhaps graduating with honors, what have you. She was made an example of. Indeed, and I think this the tragic part about this, we hear this threat to her, her entire life, her college career, but no threat to his. And he's, yeah. you know, I mean, this this is like I said, it's as American as apple pie. So we we really need to figure out a way in this country to address sexual assault in a way that does not demean women. Well, I'd love to see Congress act. Um, I got another long list uh, ahead of them uh, should they decide to do more. Uh, but I would love to see things exposed here. And I don't know who else was involved in pushing this decision. So we don't want to demean people. But you know what, anytime there's a powerful program, they seem to usually have powerful people like a college president, an administrator, an athletic director on speed dial, probably got their cell phone, they call them at home, if you know what I mean. So I'd like to unpack more here. And I'm sure that's why the family has filed this lawsuit. I wish them the best. I can't imagine going through something like this. And and we see another family having to deal with it in Stanford, another um, poor reaction. This is indisputable. Dr. Rashad Ritchie has the day off. On with the Honorable Mayor Mondale Robinson. We're right back. Welcome back. This is Indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed and for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Our esteemed co-host is the mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, Mayor Mondale Robinson, a fan favorite around here. Um, you've had some tough elections, I'm sure, Mayor. Uh, there is that runoff going on in the state of Georgia. I feel like we're always in an election here where I am in Georgia. So let's remind people what is going on between Raphael Warnock, the incumbent, and his opponent, the running back, the Republican Herschel Walker. Uh, Georgia Senate runoff, will Georgia choose Raphael Warnock or Herschel Walker? Find out. Atlanta's own Dr. Rashad Ritchie will join his colleagues here at TYT. You can watch Tuesday, December 6th on TYT.com live. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. It's a very important election with huge implications. You can also tune in on Samson TV Plus, Roku, Zumo, Pluto TV, TCL, Football TV. No, Fubo, right? Is it Fubo TV? Uh, and local now. You know where to find it. Again, it's Tuesday, December 6th. It is an election with huge implications. Now, let's get to some of the viewer comments here. We'll start with our beloved TYT members. Uh, okay, up first, we have Mickey C. We love when Mayor Robinson visits TYT. I told you, Mayor, your fan favorite. Um, any shout out to your fans? Uh, they, listen, I'm a part of the squad, so I'm 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 actually blessed to be here speaking on their behalf. Yeah, he's so humble too. Is that what you love about him? Uh, Lynn says, nine months. It's time for delivery free Brittany Griner. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Again, Brittany Griner, if you saw the top of the show, just going through uh, horrific conditions over there in a penal colony in Russia. Uh, we do have more on the Stanford student who took her own life, Katie Meyer. Um, Mickey C says, women rarely report being sexually assaulted. They're looked at with suspicion by campus police, businesses. They again, then again, when reporting to the police. And yet again, when questioned by prosecutors, every step of the way, they're forced to relive the attack. Even when the rapist is found guilty, they rarely get much jail time, if any. We know that Brock Turner got very little and indeed, Seemed like the judge, prosecutors, they felt sorry for him instead of his victim. Uh, YouTube comments now. Boondocks Dragon says it seems to be that along with guns, sports are also deemed more important than lives in this country. Certainly seems so. 
Let's go to our YouTube member, um, RJL Network. Block, block Dragon here for the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We appreciate you and now to Twitch. V Brown says if she was white or LeBron, she would be home. And Mary, you know, we're gonna move on to the next story, but I do want you to expand on that because we talked a little bit about this. LeBron James, obviously a black man, black men are under assault in this country and many other countries. He's a superstar, do you believe that? If LeBron were held hostage, I think the world's eyes would never look away. I think if, if he was LeBron, so first of all, this 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 I, I this analogy makes my skin crawl a little bit, and I'll, and I'll explain it. Uh, part of it, if LeBron, if if LeBron was, the if LeBron problem is problematic in center, it mm -hmm. would never be LeBron. The reason the sister was over there playing basketball is because that cap, the salary cap on WNBA yep. players, she can't make more than like two hundred fifty thousand, whereas mm -hmm. LeBron is making. Ungodly amounts of money, so it would have never been LeBron. Had it, had LeBron been locked up in Russia, you're right, the, the world eyes would never look away. I don't know if Putin would have sent him home if he would have been stopped in a, in, in a airport with marijuana, because Le, LeBron, being a chick that he is, allows Putin to negotiate more and more from America. So I think I think we shouldn't make this analogy because it it dis, it, it puts uh it's it's an unequal analogy. Mm -hmm. I will say this though, it does shine a light on the fact that there's a cap. On how much people can pay people, uh, women, regardless of how talented they are, and the fact that she had to go to Russia to make a million dollars instead of making that here speaks volumes on what. And I know the the argument, the counter argument is, well, the NBA is more profitable than the WNBA. The NBA is more profitable than WNBA because of the way this country is set up and mm -hmm. how long we've been supporting men basketball in this country. So that's not a real argument, I think. So I would say take the cap off what women can make, and then if we get these. Uh, these advertisers to start investing in women athletes like they do men, then sisters will not have to put themselves in jeopardy going to places like Russia and other craziness or other crazy places to play basketball or any other sport just to survive. So I think I think the problem is not that if it was LeBron or a white woman, it's, it's the problem, yeah. problem is we take these talented sisters and put them in these places when we cap what they can and can't make. Yeah, they have to work year round, just to, their bodies can't rest. And you're right, the league should step up and say more and pay more here. Because I don't think that she would have been in Russia either. Had she had a decent paying job matching her skill set here in America. All right, Mayor, let's move on. It's my favorite part of the show. They are the gift that, that keep giving. I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a in Sunday? I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. <laughs> Help me with what? If you, if you need food, whatever. But if you guys are doing drugs and you involve my kids because my kids are around, our friends are around, it's odd behavior. You guys what? are doing odd behavior, whatever you do. You say we're doing odd behavior? It's odd behavior. You want to be <laughs> part of the community? That's fine. How is it odd behavior, though? You're hanging out his at his house, outside the house, for who knows how long. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, so what are you, how? I was just inside, you know? Drugs, I don't even do drugs. Look, look, <laughs> look what? just be clean, just be honest, <laughs> and stay, away, stay away from the kids, okay? Look, sir, I don't That's do drugs. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm don't not, care. I don't smoke I don't or care. anything. I don't care, it's don't not know. my business, <laughs> but stay away from the kids. That's all I ask, okay? Okay. Okay? Uh, we good? All right, whatever, man. Respect, though, okay? <laughs> All right, whatever. Mayor, you know what is odd? <laughs> What's odd is walking across the street in your neighborhood and accosting a kid who just came outside, who was just there, we learned, uh, visiting relatives. We're calling this a holiday male, Karen. Um, he mentioned drugs. Odd behavior, Mayor, was just. Coming outside, excuse of drug drug use. The tragedy of all of this, uh, Sister Reed, is if you, did you hear his analogy? He starts off talking about you're doing drugs. Kid, my kids are here. Other kids are here. Your odd behavior, and he said you've been outside for a long time. That implies that you've been watching this kid for a long time. The odd behavior, of course, is being outside. Really, what he's saying is the odd behavior is having your black skin across the street from my house. Then he he tried to walk away and say, "Oh, if you're doing drugs, it's not my business. If it's not your business, why are you on this side of the street?" 
This is this is definition. This is whiteness. How you come in hot and then back off uh, and try to be a victim. I, I, oh, it's not my business. He threw his hand up. It's not my business. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. If we don't care, why are you over lecturing me about being black outside? We know what the crime is. The crime is he's black on a skateboard. Period. That's right. And mm-hmm. Mayor, I, yeah, I want to caution you to calm down too. Okay, yeah. you need to calm calm down. Okay, okay. I, and I need to see your papers. But by the way, calm down. You're scaring me. You're very aggressive. Okay, and my kids are here. You're aggressive. Okay. Uh, let's tell you more. The 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 gentleman and really the the kid who was accosted here is a gentleman. Okay. This this guy did not deserve it. Did not even deserve. The conversation. Skate Lord B. Chill, the black skater who recorded this, uploaded it to TikTok just a couple days ago, mentions in the caption, he was just visiting family in Tucson, Arizona. What a great first impression. Mm. Again, Mayor, this is how stuff gets out of hand. This is how people die. You mentioned something that I didn't hear when I first saw this. I was stunned, I was shocked. And it's hard to be shocked. By a Karen or a male Karen these days, but I was pretty shocked when I saw this one. It looked like an SNL skit or that you know website Funny or Die. Okay, I thought that I, I said you know, hey Alex, you got to check the source on this because this might be a comedy sketch. This does not seem real. It is real, but you seized upon something. He said been outside for a while. Yeah, he was stalking him. Okay, I know a kid who just had Skittles and a Snapple, who. Is no longer with us. He was stalked too. So the way this gentleman, <laughs> Skate Lord B. Chill, behaved, I don't think it's a stretch. It could have saved his life, Mayor. No, I mean let's let's be honest. I mean we're talking about uh, someone who's displaying behaviors that is racist. I mean this is this is profiling. You're not a police officer, but you're still profiling this child, and that's you're talking about your children not caring about somebody else's child in your very action. This is hypocrisy on high. However. In America, when you're talking about black suffering or black traumatic experiences, it does not apply. It does not apply. This is how we can say all men are created equal and still own black men and black women, right? This is this is the very nature. Uh, going back to what I said earlier, this is as American as apple pie and baseball. We cannot pretend that this racist behavior that exists in what we just saw is a small thing. And when we say it's a small thing, we minimize what could have happened had that young man said, "Hey, you you." You're you're pressing, you're coming close to me, and picked up his skateboard like he was going to do something. It's Arizona, home of the neo Nazis. He could have been shot. We don't know what could have happened had this kid chose a different path or did everything he had the right to do and be angry at this man for accosting him. So I think I think um, you're absolutely right. His behavior, this young man's behavior, probably saved his life, his yeah. life, or prevented the cops from being come called. And we know young men of his age. Between 18 and 24, this is one of the leading calls, if not the leading calls for black men, death by cop. So this is this is a this is not a small thing. We shouldn't pretend that it is. So I think uh, this is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, it is. And I gotta tell you, I don't think there's enough outrage. You know, not not a lot of comments here. This is why TYT is here. This is why Indisputable exists to shine a light on this kind of filth. You know, when this male Karen came across the street and started spewing his hatred, I thought he was quoting, you know, that guy who came down the escalator and declared his candidacy for the presidency. It was, but today he woke up believing what he believes. Mayor, I still haven't seen your papers. I need you to calm down because you're being aggressive. But while you do that, let's give him a double dose. You want to call the police on him for having a barbecue on a In Sunday? You must feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. I don't care. Go to McDonald's. I have been up at three in the morning. We, we have been putting up. Right, we all were. What is that? We were here again putting out the fire. I am sorry. What is that? Come, what I'm is done. that? You don't storm up the end. No, excuse me. I'm not up at three, sir. I am your. I know no you be mad. I've got it under control. I yeah. don't care. This stuff. Win this win. Are you guys nuts? No, we're not. We're five six well, in the same way. I don't care. That's an insult. We were up at this three in the morning. Well. I don't care. Right I will be here. happy. Well, you can come over and put the fire out at my house. No problem. Because we were right up there at this three in the morning when I your place went. We are all here. Put your hands up. 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 Put your hands
You're okay. fucking nuts. You can. Thank you. All right. No. I will call the police. Fine. No problem. Should have been called yesterday. You no, that's it. ridiculous, people. Get you real. This Karen's in South Africa, and where do we begin? Let's start with this mayor, this whole argument about because her next ploy, I'll call the police will be I'm in fear, I'm in fear. But you drove over there, you started screaming and berating this gentleman in another country in his face. And then it was so high, it was so pitchy, it was so pitchy, okay? And then you drove off with the threat, Mayor, is this Karenism so far out of hand that no matter where Karens are throughout the world, globally, they do feel that they're beyond reproach. I mean, listen, let's let's not pretend that white whiteness, because the ideal of Karen is this whiteness, right? It is it does not stop at geopolitical borders. We absolutely know that. And it's it's ironic that we're looking at one from South Africa, a place that has a unique relationship to black Americans, in that while most of our enslaved ancestors did not come from that part of Africa. We know that we had segregation and they had apartheid and the physiological effects on South Africans and blacks is so close. So to see her screaming and ranting so loud because of what could have happened but didn't happen yesterday. And also her pulling out her AK-47, which is the police, mm -hmm. is, is par for the course. I mean, and when I say that, I mean that Karens use the police as their AK-47s. Yeah, and I think that by coming over there and getting in his face, it was empowering for her. It was her way of saying, I, I'm still in charge. And no matter how big you are, I get to call the shots here. You know, there's this inner anger that I really want to know, Mayor, why they're so angry. You know, I have a theory that she probably was angry as barbecuing, as she's used to eating food with no seasoning, perhaps. Okay, she probably was angry at the food he was chefing up. Yeah, I think I think like some of this anger, some of this anger uh, is probably a you know anger is a secondary emotion. I think it's related to something other than anger. It's this idea that I can control, I can do what I want to because of who I am. Mm -hmm. So so this anger is how dare you do something I wouldn't do uh, in in my presence. I have the right to check you because you did something I wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, get in your car. That, that, that this is a fear. So if you truly were afraid, the first thing to do is call the police officers, not go scream in someone's face and escalate. You're in three or four people's face, pointing, screaming, then get back in your car and then said, I'm gonna call the police. Because the call on the police now, you're already hyped up. So you're gonna call the police, you're gonna be crying. You're gonna act like you were threat, your life was threatened and you could have died because of a fire that did not come across a hill yesterday. But you're mad because they barbecued and you wouldn't have barbecued or you can't barbecue and mm -hmm. you didn't invite. Yeah, if you really thought that there was an issue, if you really thought there was a threat, you would simply pick up the phone and say hi. You'd call the non-emergency number, quite frankly. you say, hi, I smell well seasoned meat next door. I'm not sure if it's just a lovely family barbecue or perhaps it could be something that could ignite you know, some dry bushes nearby. Could you check it out, officer? Thank you. And then you go about your day. Didn't do that, Mayor. This is indisputable. Much more to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie. The good doctor has the day off, he's earned it. I'm Sharon Reed. And joining us as co host today is the Honorable Mayor Mondale Robinson. Mayor, Thank you so much for the commentary. Again, you're a fan favorite, and we appreciate you being on. Um, it's day nine, shoptyt.com. So let's remind you about what we're doing here, doing our part, if you will. Journalists around the world are under constant attack from covering the war in Ukraine to other brutal conflicts around the world. It's vital to support a free and open press now more than ever. So for our ninth and final day of impact, we're supporting the Committee to Protect Journalists. Nonprofit dedicated to promoting journalistic freedom, defending the rights of reporters worldwide. For today only on shoptyt.com, $3 for every $30 order, $5 for every $50 order, and $10 for every $100 order will be donated to the organization. Thank you for helping us make an impact. Again, journalists around the world are under attack. Covering the war in Ukraine, other brutal conflicts, this is vital to support a free and open press. 
This is the ninth and final day of impact supporting the Committee to Protect Journalists, nonprofit dedicated to promoting journalistic freedom, defending the rights of reporters worldwide. Three dollars for every 30, five for every 50, 10 for every 100 will be donated to the Committee to Protect Journalists. Today only shop tyt.com. Let's get some more comments. We're always appreciative for your donations, your membership. Lynn is back. She says, what's even worse? Is that I can imagine Holiday Mail Karen going back to his house and bragging that he resolved the problem of a black man in their neighborhood. Ain't that the truth? We know that that's probably what he's a hero. Went back and is a hero, had himself a brewski. Eileen, lesbian dance theory dragon. The Karens, when they get so angry, sound like Tucker Carlson when he goes berserk. One doesn't he? YouTube now. Mel Karen says it's not my business. This is from C. Michael Henson. Mel Karen says it's not my business, but I'm gonna mind it anyway. What if we started minding these racist people's business? Sometimes I wanna accost a Karen for no reason. There's always a reason to accost a Karen. Bernie, the Kiwi Dragon, appreciate you both, Ms. Sharon and Mayor Mondell. I hope Doc is getting his well-deserved break. I have a joke, why did the Karen cross the road? To introduce himself as the neighborhood Karen. Well, he was that that part is accomplished. Okay, Bernie, he accomplished that part. Well, just when you think that you know what, these are isolated incidents and people don't behave like this often. We find people who behave far worse, like the Ohio man who we told you about not long ago, who got drunk and punched a black woman. There's an update. Uh, He's been sentenced now, but let's let's show you the video if we can. Um, Andrew Wall calling her the N-word and punching her. He's a cop, apparently. Bitch, shut your mouth. I've never been drunk in my life. I've never been drunk in my life, Mayor, and so I, I, this is an honest question. Is this par for the course for anyone who has too much to drink or just certain people? I'm, I'm from the South, I'm from country, uh, yeah. North Carolina, where, where old folk tell you alcohol, uh, uh, drunk, uh, drunk lips are the, the words. Off the mm. drunk lips come the words of a racist heart, and we just saw this. Okay. So this is this is this is only uh, the behavior he wanted to display without the alcohol. Alcohol does not make you racist. You're racist in general. Uh, alcohol just lowers your tolerance for how long you can protect yourself from saying what you truly wanted to say. This video was so disgusting. I I, I am um, jailed is not where I think he should be, but I, I'll leave that to the justice system. I think this is uh, this is this is a absolutely disgusting video. I have seven sisters and I could not have been her brother posting a video. Yep. I would have I'd have been her guard dog trying to find him. So uh, I, I'm glad I'm in North Carolina and he is in Ohio because we, we I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure the punishment fits the crime here because um, this person will get to resume their life and not really pay a consequence because I don't even know if having this video on the internet forever is something mayor that um, will preclude someone from just um, owning a home, going about their business, doing whatever they wish. Six months in jail for Andrew Walls, two years probation for the attack. He was originally charged with two counts of assault and one count of possessing weapons. And he was fined pocket change, really, I'm sure, in a lot of corners, $250. It's also alleged that Walls served as the vice president of the Akron Canton chapter of the Proud Boys. So yeah, you're right again, Mayor, it's who he is. After being assaulted, Morgan, uh, the young black woman, Morgan sought medical attention for busted lip and bruising on her face, her lip split open. Walls then addressed the victim, Cameron Morgan and her friend saying, Cameron and Sydney, I'd like to apologize for my actions that night and my choices. It's been an eye opener for me about my alcohol problem and clearly an anger problem. And I've been taking steps to make sure that I don't end up in a situation like this again. I, 
I'm sure that his lawyer wrote this part, Mayor, because by not end up in a situation like this again, it's probably because he he would probably carry out the crime a little more viciously, do it do it a different way is probably what he he meant to say. The victim had a statement in court too. Here's that. In the sentencing hearing, Morgan approached the bench to make her statement. She struggled to get the words out saying the events of that night, though almost a year ago, have heavily impacted everything that happened in my life after that, she said. I just hope in the end of all of this, accountability will be took. I think nobody does something like that without intent. Now she added, I just hope there is justice. I'm a very open, non judgmental person. I know people have issues and people go through things, but for somebody to act like that and just project such hate, I just think there has to be accountability. Mayor, not enough accountability here. That's what I think. This country came up with all kinds of laws to make sure certain segments of the population learn a tough lesson. Sometimes they just had a little bit, did a tiny bit, or maybe did nothing at all, but were accused. They went and they had to pay a debt to society that seemed disproportionate. If we started really criminalizing these racist, violent, vile acts, the way they should be, not six months, then probation and $250, don't you think there would be changes? I absolutely think there'd be changes. I listen. Let's be let's be clear though. I'm from North Carolina. I remind people again. I'm from a state where there were no prisons when slavery was in when there was slavery. There were no prison, no jails in North Carolina. It wasn't until after Reconstruction that North Carolina Constitution insisted that the, the state start building prisons, mm-hmm. and that was because we knew it was a way that you could repopulate slave plantations by selling people that you in like you locked up black people being locked up for being on the same side of the street applying for work against white people. This history is not detached. His his sentence is not detached from that history. Six months, and he also had weapons. Possession of weapons, and also, I mean, so like, and if you read the statement that his attorney wrote, because we know he didn't, mm-hmm. his attorney wrote, they left out the racist part. He didn't apologize for being racist. He didn't. He didn't apologize for using racist. He apologized for being drunk and his anger. He didn't apologize for being a racist. So I'm, I'm telling you, there's no, there's no, there's no justice in acting in this. There's no justice gonna come from the six months where he'll probably stay in jail for a couple of weeks. And go back home in two months, and his friends lift him up and make him a hero, just like Rittenhouse. Yeah, um, and and God bless the victim in this case. She didn't ask for any of this. I am a judgmental person, particularly in cases like this. I am judgmental, so I, I'm not with her on that part. This this person needs to be judged and judged harshly. This person, I believe, got a deal. And a little sweetheart, something or another, because everybody knows each other and everybody does a favor for even the most racist person in town who comes from a good family, I'm sure, okay, as he serves on the board of the Proud Boys in the local chapter. Mayor, what would you like to see him get illegally, I should add? Yeah, so, so I, I, beyond him, I, I think black people deserve, I don't think, I know black people deserve. Uh, the same kind of justice and reaction from America that other that other folk. I love how our Jewish brothers and sisters stand together when there's uh, anti-Semitism in in the media in the world and people reject mm-hmm. it, ostracize those who who espouse those views. I need that same type of stuff for black people. I need that same type. Donald Trump should be required to have a list as long as Kyrie Irving, because of he. He allowed Kanye West and Nick Fuentes to come to his house for Thanksgiving. I need that same type of hate when someone is, when it's black, when it's against black, anti blackness. We need to make sure that black people see justice in our folk. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, it, and it's far time for that, that to happen. And I too love it. I love to see a community band together and say, you're not gonna get away with this. We can't stop you from saying these horrific, and anti-Semitic things, but we can double down and say, you're not gonna have any daylight between us, none here. So I agree with you, Mayor, I couldn't agree more. Let's start in San Francisco, where police there are requesting that they're robots now. Robots be allowed to use lethal force. So let's show you what we're talking about there. I'm really calling this baby Terminator, but it has serious life 
implications, if you will, because if they're allowed to use deadly force and the police say that this is the only way to go, the only route they have, they want approval from the city's board of supervisors to use these robots to well, basically shoot to kill. Kill criminals where the risk of loss of life is imminent and outweighs any other force option available to the San Francisco Police Department. Now here's what we've learned. San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Aaron Peskin, initially pushed back on the use of the language in the draft and said, look, robots shall not be used as a use of force against any person. And so what did the police do after that? Well, they said, well, we'll just remove that language from the draft. Doesn't really solve the problem if you believe there is one. The three member rules committee, which Peskin chairs, then unanimously approved that draft, advanced it to the full board of supervisors for a vote on November 29th. Peskin excused his decision by claiming, quote, there could be scenarios where deployment of lethal force was the only option. Now in the draft, the purpose reads in part, nationwide violent offenders outgun law enforcement and high powered weapons continue to be the weapon of choice for violent offenders confronting law enforcement and innocent civilians. During large critical incidents, active shooter or incidents where an armed suspect is threatening the public or officers, where there may be a need to defeat body armor to be used to effectively control a scene with increased distance between officer and subject, allowing more time to deploy other force options. Hmm. Now the police force currently maintains a dozen fully functional remote controlled robots, which are typically used for area inspections, bomb disposal. We've seen those scenarios go down. Well, San Francisco has never explicitly allowed for robots to take human lives. Lethal autonomous weapons or laws as they're called are increasingly common in modern warfare. David, I don't know if robots can make us safer. And again, I believe these are baby terminators and they're gonna have serious life altering or maybe deadly consequences. What say you? Well, I mean, I get the intention, and as you mentioned, yes, we've all seen in bomb situations where a robot comes and either you know shoots the bomb or detonates it, and it's you know worst that happens is the robot gets destroyed. But that's an inanimate object. When you're talking about human beings, I just get really uncomfortable with the idea that we're going to send some sort of robot, some sort of device, to interact with somebody who might say be willing to put their hands up or might be willing to surrender, depending on how they're spoken to. And and the problem that we always have with these situations, but I can you know, and look, I can still understand a situation where okay. Yeah, somebody is in a barricaded building and they're firing and there's no hope and he's shooting a bunch of people. Sure, send in whatever you can send to try to put that person down. But that doesn't happen very often. And what always seems to happen in these situations is that there's a total lack of transparency. Mm. But what is the training? What are the protocols? And are there gonna be certain guardrails to make sure that if somebody is giving up or surrendering, that that is taken into account as opposed to a robot that just sees it's got a shot and opens fire. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Now, you know, I was I was talking to some of my friends earlier about this story and somebody said, well, listen, you know, police make mistakes, maybe robots will make less. Robots are colorblind. I, I think that, you know, anytime human beings program robots, terminators, that bias creeps in. But what do you think about that? Well, there is something to it. I mean, a good analogy would be the, the drones, right? The UAVs that our military pilots control say from California or Texas and they're flying around the Middle East and they see a target and they open fire. And if that target happens to be, I don't know, a school building instead of an arms depot, a lot of women and children get killed. And whose fault is that? Is it the drone's fault? Is it the military's fault? And so there's an institutional lack of responsibility. There's a disconnect. Um, But and I get the idea that sure, you want to protect the lives of the people who might be in harm's way. But there has to be some accountability. There has to be somebody, there's gotta be a level of responsibility. If it's the person controlling the robot, controlling the drone, whatever the object is, that person still needs to be held accountable for the decisions that they make. And whoever programs the robot or decides what sort of situations will trigger the robot, there has to be some level of accountability. And that's where I'm so troubled by all this. It's not the robot per se that I'm so worried about. It's the person who is programming it, controlling it, because now they're at a distance from all this and they have an opportunity to now say if something goes wrong, well, that wasn't me, that was the robot that shot the person who was surrendering. And it becomes much more difficult in sort of the chain of custody of responsibility to pin any blame or responsibility on an actual human being. And, And we need to have accountability in order to make sure that innocent people don't get killed.
Yeah, and, and is the robot going to be able to, you know, send a message that well, I felt threatened, you know? So I this is why I acted. The whole thing is really scary, and the fact that it got pushed through um, so easily to go up for a vote um, is very, very concerning. Uh, there is more. These autonomous offensive systems, such as uh, UAVs. Combat drones, um, combat drones have been used for years, but have always required a human in the loop. So that's kind of what you're talking about there to bear the responsibility of actually firing the weapons. But now the SFPD, the same department that regularly costs the city six figure settlements for its excessive use of force and actively opposes investigations into its affinity for baton based beatings, well, wants to wield that same life and death power over San Francisco's civilians. It is a story that, well, needs a lot more of a deep dive, if you will. A neo-Nazi who we've covered in the past is back, okay? Uh, John Minadeo Jr., there he is, uh, this time in Poland. I wanna just take the video here because these are US servicemen. Uh, I believe a supervisor is likely among them, and that perhaps is a good thing. As someone reminded me earlier, because this could have been a lot worse. Let's listen. You guys Americans? You guys Americans? You guys here to spread sodomy or what? Isn't that what America's number one export is? What is it? Is it George Floyd culture or is it sodomy? What do you guys think about? What do you guys think about your health secretary being a <laughs> Hey guys, what do you guys think about your health secretary being a <laughs> Nothing? What do you guys think about defending a country that has, uh, there's no meaning to be a citizen? Like any, any Mexican crossing the border is literally uh, one of you. What do you guys think? Are you guys here to spread the anal sex to Poland? <laughs> what? Isn't that what you guys, isn't that what you guys learn in your uh, training? You guys literally you guys literally have a f transsexuals that wear dresses that are your f superiors. Have you guys heard of Kay Griggs? She did an interview exposing the higher up uh, levels of the military are all sodomites. Everything he spews there, I'm not a, a psychologist, I have no degree, but I have suspicion that everything he targets as something he hates, he desires. I, I actually do believe that, Mayor. Every filthy thing he puts that label on, okay? I think adults should be able to do whatever they want. I believe he desires. What do you think, Mayor? Yeah, I don't think you're far off. I think uh, this is some this is some serious projection happening right here. Uh, to speak to speak of a a country who's who founded uh, who's founded who is you know we 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 are we are a diverse nation. Our nation is not based on a uh, on a single race. Uh, the, the strength of America is immigration. Um, and for him to talk about Mexican come across the border, um, you know this is this is. This is a ploy. I, what, what did what did strike strike me as interesting was U.S. military uh, personnel walking around in uniform in public. When I was in the Marine Corps, we, when we were going across seas, my first job was the Marine Corps. I would I would never have put on my and then we were I was in the, in a lot calmer time. I would have never worn my uniform from America even on a plane directly to a military base because of the threat to you and yourself. So I, just, I find it interesting unless they were on a mission wow. in a mall, but I don't, I don't see a military. So I'm, I'm, that's interesting to me that you would be in camouflage uh, off, off, off duty station like that. So I, I, um, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. I, I, I think uh, what, what happens though is we, we saw America and, and I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a patriot in the sense that I, I swear allegiance mm -hmm. Flag, I'm, I swear allegiance to justice, and I and I do. Uh, there are there are beautiful things about America, and there's also horrible things. But I do think it's something that should be said about whoever is 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 the officer that trained these gentlemen. Uh, the way that they just laughed and kept walking speaks extremely highly of their patience. Because I don't know 
at their age or now, if I have patience for someone stalking me like that. And yeah. he got extremely close to one of those soldiers, so much so that I could see his uh, rank and also his his unit that he was a part of. And I think that to me would have been enough to turn around and, and warn you very harshly to mm-hmm. back up. So yeah. I, I applaud these brothers for keep walking because it wasn't going to get them to react. Like like a grown man warning is really what you're talking about. He needed a little grown man warning. Um, so he said everything he said. He he invaded personal space and then he he did a zero in um, and target his hate towards the black soldier. Listen, keep keep uh, pulling white, okay? Stay stay away from those white women. Hey, stay away from those white women. Because uh, miscegenation used to be a crime in your country. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You guys here to spread some homo worship, and you get called out on it. Show us what a tough guy you are. You got an AR-15? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, you're in a white country now. There's no, we don't worship Mexicans. Now, most of us uh, people of color know you can't even walk through the mall without mall security (laughs) harassing you. From the moment you, you know, cross the threshold, I I wonder where's, is there no mall security in Poland? That doesn't exist, Mayor, there's there's no one there. Uh, Let's tell you a little bit about this because I agree, um, he came very close to getting something here, okay? And them showing him the American soldier way. Okay, US Army spokesman recently commended the group of young American soldiers for exercising restraint while they were verbally harassed by a racist neo-Nazi in the mall in Poland. In a statement to the Daily Mail on Friday, the US Army spokesman praised their response. The US Army expects all soldiers to abide by the Army values on duty and off. We commend all soldiers who demonstrate discipline and restraint when confronted by provocative behavior. Now the video of the incident went viral this past week and notorious neo-Nazi and racist John Minadeo Jr. has been accused of harassing these young men. Minadeo Jr., San Francisco Bay Area neo-Nazi founded the extremist group Goyim Defense League, post racially motivated content on Gab, the far right wing social media site. While it remains unclear if Minadeo is behind this newest video of the soldiers, after going viral on social media, many people, including YouTuber Jameson's Travels, accused John Minadeo Jr. of being the man behind the camera. And after the accusations were thrown his way, Minadeo shared a link to the video on his Gab account. Instead of denying he was the one behind the vile abuse being dished out in the Polish shopping mall, he encouraged his fan base to wreck the YouTuber's comments. He wrote, Boomer alert, wreck. And gas comments, let's go. Hey, drop the F bomb there. Months ago, Polish authorities arrested 39 year old Minadeo Jr. after he published this photo on Gab taken outside of Auschwitz. <sighs> Minadeo was also wearing a swastika necklace, besides posing with this vulgar banner that taunted Jewish leaders. In Minadeo's horrific stunt here, he held up the sign reading Greenblatt. Suck six million. Both signs in the picture refer to Anti-Defamation League CEO Jonathan Greenblatt, who has been leading campaigns against anti-Semitism in the US. Another incident that Medeo Jr. had earlier posted shows him berating this South Asian man near the atrium Reduta shopping center in Warsaw for more than four minutes. Just mind his business, not gonna leave this man alone either. He accuses the man of effing up Europe calls him a parasite, tells him that he should leave my country. This is my country, Minadeo lies. I'm European, why are you coming to the white man's land? You're genociding our race, you're an invader, go home invader. We don't want you in Europe, Poland for Polish only. Mayor, this kind of globe trotting, hey, it really is a full time job. And I do wonder, I I don't have, I'm a mother, I work, I have upkeep, I need to rest. I wonder about the funding 
This is you. This is a wealthy, racist man sport now. Yeah, and, and being uh, uh, you know a white nationalist neo Nazi is also a way to become wealthy. Uh, I.e. Nick Fuentes and others, the Proud Boys and so many others um, have made, uh, uh, let me not exclude the past president, Donald Trump, have made so much money by, pre- by presenting these ideas to the world on a global scale. We see so many folk that are YouTube famous, that are that are internet famous because of their very these very silly views, i.e. Tucker Carson as well. I, I think, I here's what I would say, um, there's gonna come a day where reckoning will happen for Mr. Minadea. And I and I promise you it's not gonna be pretty because what because what happens is everybody is not bathed in this this passivity. There will be there will be reckoning. I I, I what what's what's funny to me though is these American soldiers are part of the probably a part of the brigade that sent to Poland for the enhanced uh, protection army uh, brigade, which is there to protect Poland from aggression from Russia. And I, and I think it's, and it's so funny to me that you walk around free is free because of, in part because of these brothers, uh, these military uh, American military soldiers who you are simply harassing just because you are trying to get clicks and views, um, <sighs> clicks and views. Uh, and I, I I don't know if you believe it or not, but I, I I would say one thing, and that one thing is it's absolutely disgusting, and it should be criminal. On yeah, all shit. Wow. And like you said, probably getting rich off of it. I was once told, I think it was my grandmother, find your passion, pursue it, and you'll never work another day in your life. And I, unfortunately, grandma, the, the racists know that too. Uh, these white nationalists know that too. Much more to come. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. And we have Mayor Mondale Robinson as our esteemed co-host today. Much more to come. Welcome back to Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie. I'm Sharon Reed filling in for the good doctor today. And the esteemed, the honorable Mayor Mondale Robinson is with us once again. Always enjoy having you here, Mayor. I don't think Will Smith was ever canceled, Mayor. I don't. Um, it, what we all saw was a meltdown and there was a victim involved and Will Smith had to go away and he had to um, attempt to make amends. Some people argued about too slow, not not enough, should have done an interview with Oprah, what have you. He also though went back to work and the movie's called Emancipation. And you know I know somebody who worked on the film and I've heard this is perhaps his greatest work. And it's a shame it could be overshadowed by this, but he's talking. He's making the rounds now. He's talking about his love for this story. And he's also hearing from people and reacting to people who say, you know what? I'm not ready to see you yet go back underground. And here's what the Oscar winner has to say. He spoke to Trevor Noah Will Smith did on The Daily Show, where he asked the audience for understanding for his assault on Chris Rock at the 2022 Oscars, which Smith called a horrific night. Uh, Will Packer didn't appreciate it either, okay, the Oscar producer who did nothing but a great job. When asked about audiences not wanting to watch his work, here's the quote from Will Smith. I completely understand that if someone is not ready, I would absolutely respect that and allow them their space to not be ready. Smith continued. There's many nuances and complexities to it, you know, but at the end of the day, I just, I lost it. I guess I would say, you just never know what somebody's going through. Smith was promoting his upcoming film, film Emancipation, which is loosely based on the life of an enslaved man named Gordon. The man in this famous photograph, nicknamed Whipped Peter. Smith said about the project, I'm hoping that the material, the power of the film, The timeliness of the story, I'm hoping that the good that can be done will open people's hearts at a minimum to see and recognize and support the incredible artists in and around this film. The film tells Gordon's story of when he eluded slave catchers to join the Union Army. Smith says he hopes the importance of the film is not diminished by the Oscar incident. Smith also said it may be his best film yet. The people on this team have done some of the best work of their entire careers. And my deepest hope is that my actions don't penalize my team. Smith reportedly paid 35 million. He was for emancipation that according to Variety, it's the highest, if true, 
upfront salary paid to any actor in 2022. And so Mayor, like I said, I don't think that Will Smith was ever canceled. Um, if you do the math and you added up all the people who were watching and had an opinion, right? Because everybody had an opinion. And I think there are more people who said, not good, but we're not canceling you for this one really bad incident. But I want to know what you think about his explanation because in some ways he can't win after that incident. What do you make of his explanation that quote, you never know what someone is going through? Presumably he's talking about himself. He's definitely talking about himself. This is a selfish response. Uh, there's no there's no consideration to um, Chris Rock, what Chris Rock is going through. And also, um, like you said, this was the first time we had a black director of, of, of the uh, of Oscar. So I, I, here's, here's what I would say. I am a black man who love black men. I am I, I started Black Male Voter Project as a love letter to black men in our in the world, the country, making us invisible in the political space. Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. And the world allowing him to bounce back so fast is a continuation of America's long or big appetite for black men suffering. This, uh, the, the fact that this movie name is Emancipation is perfect and spot on because to, eman- to be emancipated is to be free of process from, lab- from, from basically from political or social uh, restrictions. There's no restrictions on Will Smith's career when he can come back and make $35 million in the same year or right after this happens. Here's what I would say. We all know it's well documented, not after Chris Rock made his joke, before Chris Rock made his joke, that he has a social disorder that does not allow him to read people's emotion like most of us on their face. Will Smith is friends with Chris Rock, which means he would be aware of this. Or he was friends with them. They have a long, a long relationship. To get up there and smack that man in his face on national TV is absolutely disgusting. We should also mention Chris Rock's age and height and weight. And we know had that been Dave Chappelle or or, or Earthquake, Will Smith would have sat in that chair and laughed like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is absolutely disgusting behavior to watch uh, to watch a black man smack another black man. At this moment, at, at that moment, uh, a show being hosted by a black man that had never been hosted. I'm sorry, not hosted by a black man, but produced or directed by a black man is absolutely disgusting. I am not okay with Will Smith uh, being paid $35 million for this money. I'm not okay with him pretending that what he did was not uh, bullying. I'm not okay with him. He had no remorse. The remorse came when he saw the blowback and he saw what the world was doing. Because if you were remorseful, you would have left when security tried to make you leave. Mm-hmm. When security tried to make Will Smith leave that stadium that night, he said he he refused to leave and they let him sit and accept that award. That is absolutely disgusting. You felt nothing for Chris Rock. You put him in a position that he should never be in. And I, yeah. I, I am disgusted by it. I think you're exactly right. He bullied Chris Rock and he meant to humiliate him to proportions we've never seen. We've never seen anyone behave like that on the biggest stage in the world and be the victim of that and not fight back and not even know how to react. I also applaud Chris Rock for being able to comport himself in that moment. I do. And let's talk about the aftermath of that Oscars moment and that slap. Because I do believe Will Smith's team leaked things like, "Oh, Will Packer said I could stay. And I found it reprehensible. Well, Packer didn't know what to, he had his hands tied like I'm trying to support everyone here, not have a black man ended. I think he knew in the moment exactly how terrible and disgusting this was, but he was trying to rebuild and maybe we could say it's part of the show. Maybe I can, you know, trying to protect black men. And what does Will Smith do after he does all that? He even dimes Will Packer out and says, He said I could stay, don't just blame it on me. He didn't want to take any responsibility here. I too though, Mayor, am I'm sure this is a great movie. I have a friend who worked on the movie intimately and said, wow, you Sharon, when you see this. And I said, I'm not gonna watch it. And not because I don't wanna know my history. It is exhausting, it is traumatic to be black in America, no matter who you are. Michelle Obama told us that recently, didn't she? No matter who you are, it is exhausting to be us and have to walk down the street and encounter a Karen or a male Karen or anybody else who wants to attack and assault just the essence of who you are. And I am tired of Hollywood showing me black trauma. That's just my opinion, Mayor, just mine. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think it's just yours. I think it's you know it's almost 40 million of us uh, uh, black people in this country. And I bet we most of us feel that very same way. There's another way to explain, to explore and show the black experience that continue to show us the same story over and over. I, I think it's also we should we should also mention the violence. In this, in this, and then people, people forget the epigenetics that's associated with trauma. You don't have to experience trauma to know it. We saw this from a study from John Hopkins about the Jewish descendants of folk from the Holocaust, how their trauma, their DNA, well, not their DNA, but their RNA was forever changed because of the trauma of their ancestors. So if that happened to the Jewish brothers, our Jewish brothers and sisters, imagine what happens to Black Americans because of 400 years mm. of slavery and Jim Crow in this country. I don't need to see that to understand what it means. It is still brutal to be Black in America. I will say this and end it. It is funny in a very dark and sadistic way that mm-hmm. this violence is the last, is this last thing we've seen from Will Smith. Not just this movie violence, the violence that you think you need to get up and hit another human to protect your wife. So people say, oh, he was standing up for a black woman. First of all, the, the, the sexist and misogynistic of thinking and that goes into a statement like that is yes. absolutely disgusting. And it continues this buck idea that this is a mm-hmm. black he's the buck against this other buck in protection of this black woman who is sitting there fully capable of protecting herself. Mm-hmm. Has a voice, she certainly isn't shy about using it, does whatever she wants to do, okay? Does not face repercussions, their life is their life. You know who probably should go see the movie? It should be ordered. The man in Ohio who punched the black woman. And uh, what in the red state? Okay, here we have a MAGA woman in this next story. Mayor, we'll end with this one too. Uh, she went into a store and she thought she was being cute. Let's show you the video first. You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face. It's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. Trump 2024. What do I got? What do I got? Trump 2024. Trump 2024. Okay, so there's a there's a grandma there in the in who thinks she's so clever and so cute and clearly has not experienced trauma. Okay. Trauma would not allow you to vote for someone or promote someone who is uh who has terrorized different communities. Okay. This is the definition of terrorized. Communities, um, but let's tell you a little bit about it. TikTok poster, and this is behavior that's learned at home. I should mention. TikTok poster's name is Giselle G. The woman in the video is believed to be her mother. Giselle describes herself as just a mom with two cute kids trying to become famous on TikTok. <laughs> Last year, she celebrated when Kyle Rittenhouse got a not guilty verdict. You know, Kyle Rittenhouse, who took his long gun. And walked by the police. I think they gave him water. Didn't he get water from them? That Kyle Rittenhouse people died. Whether you believe he was under attack and you know he had to defend himself, people died. People who went to protest died. Didn't have to happen. Text what in the red state hell? <laughs> it's pretty incredible, Mayor. I'll give you the last word on this mother and daughter team. Yeah, I think uh, what we see here is uh, this person would be this. Per, this is this is a definition textbook of America's patriot. She called herself a patriot. Her daughter would say she's a patriot, and their definition of patriot has nothing to do with the red, white, and blue flag, and everything to do with whiteness. Um, Trump 2024 represents a continuation of the whiteness that was created in America, but is not unique to America. And I think it is absolutely disgusting that in 2022. We are still dealing with uh, this level of behavior, um, and it's, I, I, it's borderline psychotic, um, and not not in a way that we can do anything but call it out. Yeah, you know what else is psychotic? As we're running out of time here, Mayor, and I'd love to have you back to talk about this. This whole movement that moving on from Trump to what's his face down in Florida, DeSantis, is somehow an upgrade. Okay. When it's really a bobblehead knockoff of more of the racist, misogynistic, just disgustingness. So. 
Come on back for that. Mayor, real quick, tell us where we can find you. I am Mundell on all social media platforms. Thank, Thank you, so. you, Mayor. We'll see you next time. This is Indisputable. Dr. Rashad Ritchie had the day off, and it was my complete honor to sit in for him.